Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly. So I have here something different today, which we have is um, a Maxis, a Seik Maxis. I don't even know how you pronounce it, Seik Maxis, Seik Maxis. Uh, basically, it's an LDV, I think. Uh, I'm not sure, but apparently they were an LDV. But this is, obviously, it's a Chinese van. I, I am very, very interested in this video myself because I want to get to know what these vans are like. I've not seen one, I've not dealt with one before. Uh, so I don't know any uh, any any of the usual stuff that happens on them. Um, I don't know if not seeing one before is a good thing, but obviously they're not that popular. I mean, I do see a lot of them around. Um, I was actually interested. I was kind of tempted in. I was looking at getting a new van recently, and I don't know. I decided to hold on to my Volkswagen Crafter for another while. It's not giving me any issues. It's just getting old. Um, and I was thinking maybe I'm going to look at a new van. I did look at a new Transit, and one of these was not quite but almost half the price of a of, of an equivalent sort of transit so that's what made me interested in buying one but we'll have a look at have a look at this one today and it, maybe maybe having a look around it myself might give me an idea of if they're a good or bad van to buy so this one's coming from a rental company self-drive okay inside get it started up my customer's already pulled the bonnet for me that's um i don't know how you get rid of that okay button down here Turn the radio down, press OK is it, switch, no that doesn't work, how do we switch to the next message? Okay there we go, alright so it looks like we've got an ad blue level over there, you see that? Ad blue level 65%, that's 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 a good thing there, isn't it? which is, um, don't see that on a lot of vehicles, they don't normally give you how much percentage of your ad blue tank is, is in there like, like some of the Citroen relays and stuff you just gotta wait until the light comes on and says we need ad blue right now uh, we don't have let me just see if I can go through oh here we go so I'm pressing these buttons we don't have any engine lights on at the minute so it's averaging 34 miles per gallon which is interesting okay so just having a chat with a customer here I'm saying there's no engine lights on he has got his own snap-on uh, diagnostic reader that he uses for he's got a fleet of vans so I've got the manager here of the um, actual company and he's he's deleted the fault codes to make it drive down here because obviously it's going into limp mode and it's losing power uh, I did ask him does he know what the fault codes were he said he don't he doesn't know what they were he just he's just pressing delete and then he's put um, DPF cleaners in the fuel tank he's had someone try and clean the DPF uh, but none of it's worked so here he is uh, he's found me so let's uh, see if we can figure it out. I'm pretty sure I can but I don't know I've not seen the van before so but they're all pretty much the same hopefully I'm just worried that there isn't any sort of software issues that um, stop me from looking at some of the live data or whatever so I'm gonna look at it using the launch euro x431 euro it's the name there x431 euro to do a scan okay we're in so we have Country China Seik Maxis Deliver 9 V90. So it's from 2022. We're going to go in. Uh, correct here. It comes from China. Smart detection. They all come from China. This comes from China as well, originally. Launch. Right, we have some fault codes, all of this stuff we're not going to worry about. Right, lay, near, light, HVAC system, just all sort of relating to a flat battery really. Engine management system. Urea tank empty, which is in the history. You can see the urea tank is not empty now because it's at 63%. But we have diesel particulate filter removed or malfunctioned. Right, that doesn't look good. Straight away, what's that saying to me? I think finger test. Uh, removed or malfunctioned that says to me that the pressure in the DPF is too low which means it's probably cracked um, but yeah well first we're gonna check before I look at the live day let's go check the rear of the exhaust all right we'll have to get down on the floor well, there's a lot of a lot of ad blue powder but no it's not cracked we've got a clean DPF okay so it's not that so let's get back in and have a look at the live data Right, we've got all these data streams. One, two, three. Um, we'll start at three. 
why not let's look for it depends what these call it so DPF differential pressure corrected pressure soot if we can measured soot mass uh, right, I don't know not sure we'll just get a look at all of these and see what information this gives us differential pressure 65 bar that can't be right measured soot mass is only 8.6 grams right so let's give it a rev um, we haven't got the engine speed up but we're gonna put the engine up to sort of 3000 rpm that's decreasing right first thing we do now is turn the ignition engine off ignition on just to see if the pressure sensor zeroes out it does so that one goes to zero which is what it should do if we're reading anything on there really with the ignition off then the, the sensor is not calibrated in but 65 bar of pressure is a crazy pressure it can't actually be that high that's the, uh, that's you know six and a half thousand millibars if we switch that to millibars and start the engine up that's six thousand five hundred five uh, 65,535 millibars which is obviously incorrect okay so we've got pressure at 65,000 millibars and when we increase the revs it drops by a couple of hundred so we've either got software issue we've got a bad DPF pressure sensor or we've got um, yeah, I suppose it could be broken hoses on the DPF. Let's go under and we'll have it. Well, we'll, I don't know where the DPF pressure sensor is. Let's try and find it. Right, then having a look at the engine. I've had a little look around and I can see that the DPF pressure sensor is over there. Two red hoses on it. It goes down the back, so obviously the pressure sensor goes underneath. Just under here, this is the DPF, what it looks like. It's absolutely massive. I can see that for sure. Right, straight away there, I can see an issue with that. I'll just try and get my hand up there. Oh lord, look at that. What in the lord is all that? Pink, oh sorry. Pink fairy dust. Oh the actual tube is um, it's just spinning. It's not even tight. Let's try and get that off. Okay, so here in the back of the van I've got some fuel holes. It's braided, toughened holes, so nice and sturdy. That should hold, do the job. Okay, that's new holes fitted on there. Okay, so back inside with the pipe fitted on, we've got a more realistic reading now from the pressure sensor, which is 107, 108 millibars of pressure at idle. now. What we can do now is we can get this DPF cleaned out just to get the pressure back down. Obviously the pressure has risen up because the pipe has burst. Maybe the maybe the pipe's burst because the pressures came up. So I'm not sure exactly which order it's happening. But if your pipe bursts, then your DPF won't regenerate. This this once that fault code is logged there, saying that the DPF is missing. Basically you're just gonna get soot filling up the DPF and it won't do its regeneration process. Then your DPF blocks up, or of course the DPF could have blocked up pressure got a little bit too high and the pipe burst these pipes are made of um, what is it so I don't even know what the word is for it biodegradable um, so it's not they're not like a proper rubber basically it's a biodegradable stuff and they do degrade over time so they do get soft and if the pressure has come slightly high of course it will burst so either way what we're looking at is clean the DPF out which we can hopefully clean down and then put a Basically, we put the new tube on, clean the DPF, and then hopefully we should be looking at a, a good, a good result. Twenty-eight hundred RPM, six hundred and thirty millibars of pressure. Okay, so just checking the fault codes there. Now we have got another fault code, which is P two four four B zero zero. Pressure difference too large in the DPF, which which is basically translates to the DPF has high pressure; it's blocked. Okay, so here is what I'm doing. I'm joining onto the DPF with a new holes here again. That comes down here on this tube. 
and that attaches to this gun which is the DPF cleaning gun which is filled with that fluid there for launch UK so now we just squeeze the trigger that goes in there at 120 psi into the DPF and then we just start the engine up it's weird this one it doesn't have an engine light on but it's got default codes for the DPF so we're going to start the engine we'll run the engine and put the rest of the cleaner in so again we're just going to squeeze the trigger we'll hold that trigger squeezed until all of the fluid is gone Okay, back inside the van we've put our DPF cleaning fluid in we now need to get back up the pressure again this one that's okay okay so we're down to 65 don't remember what we were on before okay so that is dropping we're gonna hold the revs up again to 3000 rpm or just around about 28 where I had it before 250 240 so it is dropping let's see if we can graph that it's just a little bit more interesting if you can see the graph it's just a lot of reflection on the screen so we're down to 200 what we're ideally looking at uh, pressure wise is I'd say somewhere between 30 to 60 millibars at 3000 rpm and we want around about sort of two to six millibars at idle so let's, hope, let's see if we can get it down there it's dropping nicely just gonna give it a few rev bursts I can feel that the revs aren't 100% responsive so it's quite slow uh, it's limited to 3000 revs there Okay, we're now down to sort of 40. Just let that idle out, see where we're at. It seems to be idling a bit high still. Yeah, it's not just about coming down there. Taking a bit, bit of a wild idle. Five, six millibars of pressure. We've only been running it for a minute or so. So what I'm gonna do now is go back and reset the fault codes. We shouldn't need to tell this it's got a new DPF because it hasn't got any fault codes that are indicating that the DPF is like end of life for the soot loading hasn't reached maximum so it should just go with a fault clear now let's read make sure that they've gone yep back to our data stream number three that one I don't know my screen seems to be playing up but it's not changing oh there we have we had it Anyway, 0 0.003 bar is 3 millibars, 2 to 3 millibars. You can see now we, we can rev it way higher. So we're just going to try and hold it at roughly there. We have 31 millibars of pressure, 29 now. And idle, we have about 3. It takes a while to settle down when you let go of the revs the engine takes a while to sort of settle so we're at two or three millibars of pressure right out on a little test drive it's actually a nice nippy van to drive okay one of the interesting things with this is it's got a button here let's try it out for manual regen button press press and hold no doesn't seem to do anything maybe it's only allowed to be used if it if it needs it but not sure if there's anything on here that shows you what the level. I don't know, you know, like the Toyotas show you what uh, what the fill level of the DPF is. Now this doesn't have that. But anyway, back to our fault code. Let's read. We've got no DTCs. We've done our test drive. Pressure is down. We found a fault, which was the boost hole split. DPF is now cleaned. We've got the pressure down to two millibars. Fault codes haven't returned. So it looks like we're just about finished. It looks like a nice successful job. First one of these I've seen. Probably seen many more in the future, but um, we'll see. Um, we'll get outside now and uh, give the good news to the customer. So that's it. We'll see you on the next video.